Hello and welcome back to the second geostatistic course with cool GIS and R. This is the fifth lesson of this course and the topic for today is multiple regression analysis, part one. Remember that at the previous lesson we had a full explanation about the methodology of the less squares. Then we was working with different scripts to fit different kind of polynomials in our data set. It was a linear, quadratic and cubic polynomials. Also, we saw some scripts that we can use to extract the predicted and also the residual values from our data set and then export them to the attribute table in QGIS in order to reproduce some univariate analysis like histograms, QQ plots, uh, tests of normality and EDC. Remember that the residual values is those values out of our trend line. In this case is this docs over here. And the predicted values is the projection of the residual values in our model. It means these dogs, these green dogs over here. That's the projection of the residual value on our model. Then when we have the residual and predicted values, we can make an, a scatter plot to identify if there is any trend in our residuals. As you know already, what we want is to have a stationary and residual values where there is any trend. That was a short introduction about what we did at the previous lesson, that it was related to simple regression analysis, because our analysis in the regression, it was just related to two dimensions. We was working with groundwater against the X coordinate and also with groundwater against Y coordinates. Then we did all the analysis, but it was just in two dimensions. However, in the reality, we are working in three dimensions and that's what we are going to do in this fifth and sixth lesson of the course. That is going to be multiple regression analysis, part one and part two. At the lesson five of this course, we started to work with some scripts that are going to facilitate us to make an interpretation of our data set in 3D. They are three kind of graphs that we can create to see the spatial distribution of our data just in a glance. The first one is a post plot where we classify the data according to the groundwater elevation. That is a very powerful graph where we can see the information very clear. The second graph is almost the same as the first one, but in this second case, what we are going to do is classify the data according to the size. The last graph is related with a 3D scatter plot, where we can manipulate the angles of the graph in order to have a better uh, perspective of our data set. Later, we are going to be working with the scripts to do the multiple regression analysis for first order trend surface and also for second order trend surface. And we are going to be working with raw polynomials and also with orthogonal polynomials in order to see what kind of problems we can face when we have multicollinearity. After that, we are going to see some scripts to extract the information for the multiple regression analysis. What we want to get is the residuals and also the predicted values from the first order trend surface and also for the second order trend surface. Not only for the raw polynomials, but also for the orthogonal polynomials. At the end of the lesson, I'm going to do a small introduction about Kriegen interpolation. And we are going to see why we need to do a multiple uh, regression analysis 
and how we are going to use the data that we can extract from that analysis. In this image, we have three block diagrams. In the first block diagram, what we have is the real surface, but we don't have that information. The information that we have is the red docs, that is our data. And our data is a vectorial file. It is uh, no continuous data because we have just the data in a specific locations. Then our goal is to create a raster where we have the data in a continuous way. It means that we are going to have data for each pixel of our surface. Then the final raster file is going to be the Kriegen interpolation. That Kriegen interpolation are going to provide us an estimated values for the surface according to our data. However, we cannot apply the Kriegen interpolation directly to our data because there is a slope, there is a trend. Then as there is a trend, we cannot apply Kriegen interpolation because Kriegen interpolation needs the data to be stationary. It means that there is no trend in our data. Then our first step is to remove the trend from our data. With the multiple regression analysis, what we are going to see, what is the best surface that adapt better to our data set. That one is going to be a trend surface, and that one could be a trend of first order, a trend of second order. In this case, as it is a flat plane, it's going to be a first order trend surface. Then when we identify what is the best trend surface for our data, where we have the minimum value for the residuals, and it makes sense according to the geological context, then we can take that uh, trend surface and remove from our data. And what we are going to get when we take the trend from our data set, what we are going to have is the red dots, but now it's going to be the residuals. We remove the trend and now we have the residuals. Once we have the residuals, then we can apply the Krugen interpolation in that residuals because there is no trend in our data. Then after applying the Krugen interpolation, we are going to get a raster that is going to be a, a surface where we have different pixels and each pixel is going to have information. Then as we are going to have information in a continuous way, we can plus this information that is the Kriegen interpolation from the residuals to the trend surface. Then when we plus both of them, we are going to have the final surface that is going to be a raster and it's going to be the final raster, right? With the, the trend with our Kriegen interpolation. And that's the goal of the, of the multiple regression analysis, right? To get first the trend surface and second, to get the residuals associated with that trend surface. In this course, we are not going to do Kriegen interpolation because it's going to be part of a different course. But in this course, what we are doing is the, the exploratory data analysis. Then what we are doing is to identify what is the best trend surface and also extract that trend that is going to be the predicted values and also extract the residuals in order to have that values to be interpolated. Well, that's it. Before to leave, just a couple of things. Remember that this course is not available in YouTube. If you want to have access to the course, just go to the GeoRGB community website at gscourse.online, then go to courses, and you have the course over here. Remember that now we have a promotion. Is this promotion over here in our uh, Facebook page and we are celebrating that we get 1000 uh, followers in Facebook and from July 19 to July 25 uh, there is a code that you can use to have 20% uh, of the scone in the course okay the code is this one 1000FB 
because of Facebook. Well, thank you very much for watching and see you on the next video.